Hess's law is defined as going from a given set of reactants to a given set of products. And in doing so, the change in enthalpy. And enthalpy is simply energy. Um, so just think of enthalpy as energy. Um, is the same change in enthalpy whether the reaction takes place in one or a series of steps. Hess's law can be demonstrated uh, by two ways, and we're going to be doing both of these. We're going to combine reactions, not just reactants, reactions, to get an overall reaction. So we're going to use multiple reactions to get one. And we're going to do the same thing and use the energy, which is the enthalpy uh, change, in the same way to determine the enthalpy change for the overall reaction. So we're basically going to use delta, uh, delta H's from separate reactions to get the delta H from the overall reaction. First of all, uh, here's how the problems work. Here's the first problem, and hopefully you found this on Blackboard. If not, you could print this out. Uh, but you're going to be given this set of data. Uh, sulfur combines with oxygen to give you sulfur trioxide, and you have another reaction where sulfur dioxide and oxygen combines to give you sulfur trioxide. And you have the energy changes associated with both of those. What we're going to do is try and manipulate those two reactions to, to get the reaction below, and at the same time get the energy from that reaction. So let's begin that. Uh, the first step, what I say is look for what I call a unique substance. The unique substance would appear uh, once in the reaction we're trying to find. And also, when you look at the, the information we're given, we're, having these two, uh, we're given these two reactions, it would appear once there. Now, the one thing that I see, see unique here is sulfur, because sulfur appears once in the reaction that we're, reactions that we're given, and it also appears in the reaction we're trying to get uh, produce. So, uh, two things you look at when you're doing this. One is, is sulfur a reactant or a product? And we see in both of these, is on the left-hand side of the arrow, so it's a reactant. The next is a number of moles. Uh, in the reaction we're given, it's, it is actually one mole. In the reaction we're trying to find, it's one mole as well. So, basically, sulfur in this one is exactly the same in the reaction we're trying to find and in the reaction we're given. So in that case, we write it down exactly as we see it, and that means we write the delta H, which is right, right down here, exactly the same as well. So this is a first step. Now we're going to try and manipulate the second reaction that's given. Okay, in the second reaction, we want to look for the unique substance once again. Now if I look at both of these reactions, I see sulfur dioxide appears up here just once, and it also appears once down here. Notice I didn't pick sulfur trioxide because sulfur trioxide is not in the overall reaction. And I didn't pick, pick select oxygen because oxygen appears in the two given reactions twice. Now let's look for the two things about sulfur dioxide. Once, in the reaction we're trying to find, it is a product. In the reaction we're given, it is a reactant. That means we need to write the reaction in reverse. So instead of writing sulfur dioxide as a reaction, we're going to switch it over to a product. So that's what I did here is I wrote sulfur dioxide as a product right there. The second difference is in the reaction we're trying to find, there's only one. Now notice there's not a number written there, but if there's not a number, it's understood to be one. There's only one mole of sulfur dioxide produced. In the reaction we're given, there's two. So that means the number we have here should be different in two ways. One, it needs to be a di different sign. Instead of negative, it should be positive because we're doing the reverse reaction. And the uh, second thing is, in, since we're having half the number of moles, we're going to take the 198.2 and divide it by 2. And that's why we have 99.1. So basically, I took this entire reaction, wrote it in reverse, and divided everything by 2. And that, so they gave me sulfur trioxide uh, produces, one mole of sulfur trioxide produces one mole of sulfur trioxide and one half a mole of oxygen. Now we know you can't have half a mole of a, or half a molecule of oxygen, but you could have half a mole in a balanced reaction if it's uh, for just talking about moles. Uh, so that's the second step. Now we want to combine the the reactants and the products and cross out things on opposite sides of the arrow. And if we can do that, mean, that means we can combine the delta H values. So let's do that. So if you look at this next step, we can see things on opposite sides of the arrow. We can cancel out. First thing hopefully you notice is sulfur trioxide. One mole is a product, one, mo one mole is a reactant, so we can cancel that out. 
The other thing you can see that cancels out is one half a mole of oxygen is a gas. So we can cancel out a half a mole there, and three halves minus one half just leaves us with one mole of oxygen. Now we can combine what's left, and when we combine what's left, we can see that uh, we get one mole of sulfur uh, produces, with one mole of oxygen produces one mole of sulfur dioxide, and that's exactly the same as the reaction we're trying to get. So if, we, if we're able to do that, now we can actually combine the delta H's. So we take the 395.2, combine it or sum it with the 99.1, and then we get the 296.1. And so that's our answer. So there's two parts to this. One is combining the reactions, reactants, uh, the, I'm sorry, the reactions to get the third reaction, which we're given right here. And the second part is combining the delta H values. Uh, we're going to do one more of these, and then hopefully you'll be okay with this. Let's try one more. Uh, this is the next reaction. Uh, you're given this set of data. So you're going to try and manipulate these two reactions and these delta H values to get this reaction right here. So let's see if you can do that on your own before you go to the next slide. Let's pause. All right, let's resume recording. I thought before we did, I'd introduce you to my friend Bubba. He is actually an expert chemist, so I don't know if you know much about pugs, but they're actually pretty adept at chemistry. Uh, I think Bubba has already worked out this problem, but let's go ahead and work through this. Um, so I'm not sure you did, but let's go through it together. Uh, first, uh, hopefully you looked for, for the unique substance. Uh, the unique substance here was, for the first reaction, was uh, nitrogen dioxide. Notice it appears in the two reactions only once, and it also appears in the reaction we're trying to get. Now the only difference between those two reactions, hopefully you notice, is in the reaction we're given, it is a product, because it's on the right side of the arrow. In the reaction we're trying to find, it's a reactant, because it's on the left side of the arrow. Uh, so that means we just need to write, instead of 67.7, we need to make it a negative, and you notice we did that below. We made that a negative. Everything else is the same. Every one of these we do will not have a unique substance, but I find it very helpful if we do the unique substances first. And if there are other reactions, really they're just going to be used to cancel out things uh, in the other reactions. So and we'll, we'll, you'll notice those as we come through. But the unique substances give us a, a nice framework in which to do these problems. So let's do the, go to the second reaction. See if you can pick out the unique substance in the second reaction and see how, how that works over. Uh, hopefully you notice that the unique substance in the second reaction was N2O4. There's one mole of that as a product in the reaction we're given. There's one mole of that in, as a product in the reaction we're trying to find. That makes it easy because we write the reaction that's given exactly the same below as we see above. So notice I've got uh, one mole of nitrogen plus two moles of oxygen gives you one mole of uh, dinitrogen tetroxide. And also, I don't change the delta H at all. So now we're ready to combine these two reactions. And if, they, if we can combine them, that means we can, we can combine the delta H's. Uh, so when I combine these, things have to cancel out. Let's see what cancels out. We have one mole of N2 as a reactant, one mole of N2 as a product, two moles of O2 as a product, two moles of O2 as a reactant. And what's left is two moles of NO2 produces one mole of N2O4, and we combine the delta H's, and we, oops, I have neglected, there should be a negative sign right there, I apologize about that. Um, so there should be a negative sign there, and that should be a negative 58.0 uh, kilojoules. Uh, so negative 67.7 plus 9.7 gives you negative 58.0 kilojoules. So uh, that concludes Hess's Law. Uh, hopefully you can work through these problems again and, and be uh, up to date on because we're going to do a, a lab on Hess's Law when you walk in on Monday. I uh, hope you had a great bake and I look forward to seeing you guys on Monday.